Hello there everyone, today we're gonna do this. This is a small check nymph, so it's uh, it's made on a, on a jig hook uh, with the tungsten bead, so it's, it's ideally suited for fishing upstream. But uh, this pattern also works very well in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in still water and, uh, and, and fished as a regular uh, 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 wet fly. Uh, I got this pattern from, uh, from a guy who visited me here in the showroom, who was actually on the, on the British uh, fly fishing national team. And uh, and he he told me that this was one of uh, the flies he had been fishing that w that was uh, producing the most, and uh, and uh, well coming from him then it's something that I really really believe in. So we're gonna have one of these uh, Chemco jig hooks, and onto this we're gonna put a slotted uh, a slotted tungsten bead, and you have to uh, to use this. So there is a slot here. And not a hole, but a slot in one side, and you have to 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 put this slot over the the hook uh, first, like that. That's how you that's how you do that. And as you can see now, uh, because the slot is in the in the in the head here, it will cover the eye unless we prevent it. So so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take the hook and then uh, attach it in an ankle, and then I'm gonna tie a bundle of tying thread just up here where the, where the eye is just making a head uh, and this is to prevent my tungsten bead from actually uh, covering uh, covering the eye so about that i'm just going to look if if that looks good that works yes that works very well and then i'm going to make a, a whip, whip finish and of course add some varnish if if you like uh, here like that then i'm going to turn the hook down again, like so. And now we have attached the, the tungsten bead. I'm gonna cover the hook here with uh, some tying thread to have a, a, a sound, uh, a good and sound um, layer of tying thread to have the materials to latch onto. And then I'm gonna tie down the hook point. And uh, for the hook point on this fly, I'm gonna use a small bundle of uh, flashaboo, uh, flashaboo dubbing in chartreuse. Uh, you can use a lot of different stuff, but uh, but but I find this this very is very nice because it it has some shine to it, and uh, and also is is quite quite easy easy to see in the water. So it's it's a good way of having a a hook point, kind of like on the red tag. Only this is green instead of red, like that. So I wanted it to be a big bit bigger, so I just turned it over. And then, because this is too much, I'm gonna cut it off. So it's basically just a small, a sm small bundle here. And it doesn't matter if if it's all uniform in length. That's not something that we we need to concern or concern ourselves with a lot. <coughs> then I want some a bit more flash to because this fly is is, is excellent in in uh, in more uh, in more uh, colored waters. So I take three strands of uh, of. Um, of mirror flash, head run mirror flash, and then I tie this down. This is going to be the rib, the ribbing, like so. And I'm going to cut that off. Then I'm going to take some Swiss dubbing, Swiss CDC dubbing Alpine fur, which is probably the most coarse, uh, the, mo the the coolest dubbing in the world for, for nymphs. It has a very, very large amount of, uh, of coarser hairs, so it really, really makes your flies look, uh, look uh, shaggy and, uh, and really just give them, give them the look of something edible. And, uh, and well, basically that's, that's what we're going for. So this is not a specific imitation, it's just gonna be something that Trout will see and think, hmm, that looks like a meal, I'm gonna grab that one. Uh, so I'm gonna I've dubbed it onto the thread here, and then I'm gonna turn this so it's it's not as thick. It's not uh, thick down towards the the end of the hook, but then it's gradually. And as you can see, how shaggy this really is, like so. And then as I move up towards the the tungsten bead, I'm gonna make the body uh, thicker and thicker, so it so it tapers. Bit more dubbing here. Really, really looks awesome with all those coarser, coarser hairs. Um, 
the Swiss CDC makes some some very very unique uh, products, and I'm uh, very happy that we became a Swiss CDC uh, uh, dealer because uh, the instant I saw these materials, I wanted them for myself. You know, I wanted them for for my flies, and uh, and and uh, <laughs> when you find materials like that, you you better have it in the shop because if if I like it, then well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you will too. It's a bit hard to come by though, but you know, um, it's difficult. It's a, it's a, it's a Swiss company, hence the name, which makes it with taxation and stuff like that a bit difficult. But but you know, it's the products are well worth it. Then I'm gonna turn my uh, my rib here, and it it doesn't matter if you catch some of the uh, some of the hairs here. It's just gonna make your fly look even more shaggy, and you can brush a lot of this out with your dubbing needle anyway. So like that, about four turns is is sufficient, I would say. Cut off the flesh, and uh, I made a small space here where I didn't have any materials. Um, and that's because I want to tie in a, a, a small CDC hackle. Um, and CDC hackles are really nice because uh, they catch a lot of air bubbles, small air bubbles, and really, really look like uh, look like legs out in the water. Uh, that was with the guy uh, I was talking about uh, from the from the English uh, fly fishing national team uh, told me. So he uses these a lot. And uh, this is one of his best producing flies, as I said. So, so it's it's it really is really is a proven pattern that he has used a lot, and uh, and with an enormous success. <laughs> you have to be good at nymphing, otherwise you won't be on 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 any national team. Then <coughs> all there's left to do is take a little more dubbing, apply that to the thread, so you have something to cover up the small gap. Up to the uh, up to the bead, and then turn the hackle, and the fly is basically done. Like that, and then I'm gonna turn the hackle here to make it look even more shaggy and even more. You do not want too many of these. Uh, these CDC feathers, uh, feather strands uh, standing out there. So, about two, or maybe, maybe, maybe three turns, something like that, should be sufficient. Like so, and as you can see, this really is just. There's a bit too much here, so I'm just gonna rip some of these off with my fingers, not my scissors, like so. Fold everything back, make it whip finish. And there you have it. Of course, I'm gonna take my dubbing brush here and I'm gonna pull out some of these coarser hairs in order to really make this look edible. And as I was saying, this is a great, great, great nymph for fishing upstream. But it's also great for, you know, just fishing downstream or, or for still water trout and, uh, and simply just uh, retrieving in, in, in small small strips because this can really look like a lot of things and I'm pretty sure that if you did not uh, tie this on uh, with with a tungsten bead but with a brass bead instead it would also be great for for even for sea trout on, on the coast of Denmark so so a nice easy pattern that really really uh, produces a lot of fish catches a lot of fish and is fairly fairly easy to tie and looks like food well, there you have it. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in and thank you for watching.